I saw Jimi Hendrix support the Bonzo wow. Dog Doodah. And I band. never saw them either. I, uh, right, right, right. Wow. I, oh, Bonzos. I would have loved to have seen them. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, both my parents were frustrated musicians, I believe. My mother had done a bit of singing uh, at, when she was growing up in the East End of London. And uh, I think for a minute, I think she might have done a couple of gigs with some guy that fancied her who played the piano. Um, this is when she was still in her teens, uh, after she returned to London from being evacuated in 1939. And, um, but that was the extent of it, really. She always loved to sing. She met my father at the end of the war. They were both in the army, but they never saw action. Uh, when they got together, I think music was one of the things that drew them together. They both loved Frank Sinatra and music of that era. They would sing, they would harmonize together. It was sweet, actually. I, it's very fond memories of them doing that. They just burst into song sometimes, you know, and they both, they, they both could hold a tune. And then, you know, we'd get together with family at, at holiday times and invariably everybody would start singing songs and, you know, so I, I guess, I, but I thought, you know, when you're a kid you think everybody's like that, so. But then I realized that, and then of course my dad would, if he had a, you know, if, if, we, if he really got into it, you know, he would, he, God forbid there was anything that he could bang with, you know, it would be like a spoon and a fork on a plate, or if there was a harmonica he'd be puffing away on that, or a kazoo, or, you know, so my dad was like dying to play something, but he just never found whatever it was, you know. There's no audio, so it's just... I haven't played for a while. Well, you know, um, I was born in 52, so I remember when I was probably barely 11 years old hearing Love Me Do on the radio. And I mean, it's so cliched, because I'm sure everybody from my era says the same thing, but I mean, I, I just, it really stopped me in my tracks. And I remember listening attentively and thinking, wow, this is, what is this? I want to hear more of this, you know. And, um, and of course, that was their first hit, and it wasn't even a number one, but, but it did get a lot of radio play. And I, it just, it definitely, a chemical change happened, you know. Um, and, I, and I became a Beatle fan. And, did you adopt the look? You grow the hair? And the... No, I was a little bit too young. In fact, one of my biggest regrets is that I never did get to see them play live. You know, I was just too young. I mean, they stopped gigging by 1966, and I was only, um, I was only 14. 14. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Um, yes, so, uh, yeah, and I, I did go and see Hard Day's Night in the theater, oh, which was, was fun. What was that experience like? It was like the next best thing to seeing them live, I imagine, but that was, that was very exciting. And I remember my aunt, my beloved aunt Sonia, had um, With the Beatles, which was the Beatles' second right. British album, and um, I basically I had it on permanent loan. <laughs> so, um, and then the, so the first Beatle album I actually bought was Beatles for Sale, which was their third, third album. And um, from then on, I was one of the nerds that would order the next Beatles album before it had even been recorded. <laughs> you know, as soon as there was any sort of murmuring of there being a new one, you know, I would go down the, the shop in Bemister's Lane in Gosport and, and give them like five shillings, <laughs> you know, which was pointless really because, you know, they would always have boxes and boxes of them for sale anyway, but I wasn't taking any chances. I'm rusty. No, there's a great story. So, and Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured it out straight away. I mean, you know, one of the things about Paul is, is um, the, the, just the, the, the Hofner bass was so distinctive, right. and uh, so it made you look at it and think, what is that? And the fact that he was left-handed, and the fact that the bass lines were great, you know, right from the get-go. Um, so I certainly was aware of what the bass was doing. Um, and then as the years went by, you know, he got more sophisticated and um, um, enjoyed reading that book, Jeff Emmerich's book, where right. they talk about how Paul would come in after everybody else went home and really work on the bass lines once you get to Rubber Soul and from that point on. And you can just hear, well, and the other thing, and I think they mention it in Eight Days a Week, is how um, 
Well, no, no. Actually, I was watching the Beatles anthology yesterday, right, okay. <laughs> just because I have it on VHS and I still have a VHS player that works. <laughs> but um, George was saying how after Stuart Sutcliffe decided to stay in Hamburg, how you know, they had this sort of argument between John and George and Paul, like, well, someone's got to play the bass. And Paul was like, yeah, all right, I'll give it a go. You know, he was totally up for it. And I think he's just, obviously, he's just such a, an accomplished, well-rounded musician that whatever he turned his hand to, he could have done a good job. And, and it's interesting because, you know, people always ask who your influences are. But I think about Paul, who's so, been so incredibly influential. And yet I don't really think he probably didn't have any particular influences as a bass player. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure he, I get the impression he was listening to everything, you know, the vocals and the arrangements. And so he wasn't like dying to be a bass player. So he didn't, it wasn't like he was only listening to bass players and he, right. if you'd have asked him back then who you oh who do you want to sound like i don't i'm not sure if he would have said anybody well to me a lot of his bass lines on those early beat albums sort of mimic the british show tunes like the tuba lines and things like that the way right it was like one five one yeah. one yeah it was like very yeah 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 very triads it was very simple and you could see how rapidly he made progress you know so 17 years old you become a bass player what what the heck happened well, when I was 16, I, I got my first guitar because I passed my O levels. <laughs> and my parents said, well, if you do, you can have a guitar. You know? So I got a guitar and I taught myself to play it. And then a year later, one of my friends at school um, said, he, he came to school one day and he said, I know a bloke who's selling two guitars. One's an electric and the other's a bass. 15 quid each. What do you think? I want to get the electric guitar. You want the bass? And it never occurred to me before. And as soon as he said that, I was like, Whoa, yeah, I could be a bass player. You know, it just seemed like, yeah, great, yeah, I like that idea. And uh, then we went to see them, and, and strangely, the, the bass was violin shaped. It wasn't a Hofner, but it was violin shaped piece of junk made in Italy. But I just like, oh, this is it, you know. And I uh, practically slept with it for the next six months, you know. <laughs> And um, so that was, yeah, that was how it started. So, but you, and what was the reaction of friends and family? Because I, I, I guess maybe because of Paul, people didn't know what a bass was, because it's not like you can stand around and play a song on a bass. Yeah, yeah, you just made me think. My first wife, Julie, I remember one day she told me, she said, sort of guilty confession, she said, and this is years later, years later, she's like, you know, I don't really know what the sound of the bass is. Like, if I hear you, if I come and hear you play, I don't really know what it is you're doing. And I was like, oh my God, wow. It's a frightening thought. Well, it's a, so, thought of, a lot of bass players go through. Which, which, but I think there's another question you were going to ask, like, like what is it about the bass? But I think the bass yeah. is it's one of those things where when it's not there, you, 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 even somebody like my first wife would say, something seems to be missing. What, what is it? You know what I mean? So I think that.